Hello everybody, my name is Jason. I'm a second year engineering science student at the University of Toronto and today I'll be talking about the course PHY 180 Classical Mechanics. Today is December 21st, 2021 and in this short video I'll be going over the main course topics and I'll also be going over two questions uh, that were presented as tutorial problems on rolling motion. So what is PHY 180? It's a year one fall course in the engineering science program at U of T. Uh, it's compulsory for all NSI students. And when I took the course, uh, the course instructor was Professor Joseph Tywison, and the lab instructor was Professor Brian Wilson. So as for the main course topics, we went over kinematics. Uh, so that includes motion with uniform acceleration, uh, motion in the plane, so 2D uh, kinematics. We also talked about momentum and energy, uh, as well as their respective conservation laws and when to apply them. Um, and a specific example of when we use momentum and energy uh, was when looking at collisions, which was a major part of this course as well. Furthermore, we go into a little bit of relativity and talking about uh, inertial frames of reference. We talked about force and work, and we talked about circular motion. Uh, so we also talked about uh, torque and we talked about periodic motion briefly near the end of the course. So a little bit of, you know, your simple harmonic oscillator discussion, but that is uh, really left uh, for, you know, the next time you take physics, which is a PHY 293, which is a course I took this past term, but more on that in a separate video. So today I'll be presenting uh, two problems from tutorial 10 uh, that were presented uh, during 2020 uh, on December 7th, so a little over a year ago. And these questions cover uh, conservation of energy, uh, specifically with uh, respect to rolling motion. And there's also a question that relates to torque and rotational kinematics. So these are the questions. In question one, uh, we have an object, uh, a solid cylinder, and a roller coaster track. And the roller coaster track is a typical setup in conservation of energy problems because around a roller coaster track, um, there is a constant uh, transformation of energy from between potential uh, gravitational energy and uh, kinetic energy. And in this case, because we have a cylinder that is rolling, uh, rolling without slipping, to be more specific, uh, we have uh, three types of energy involved. So gravitational potential is one of them. We have the uh, we have the kinetic energy due to the cylinder moving as a whole, and we have the rotational kinetic energy that is due to the cylinder rotating. So initially, the cylinder is at rest at the top of the track, and it rolls without slipping around a loop that has a height of 12 meters. And we want to know how high the cylinder must be released from in order to make it around the loop without falling off. In our second question, uh, we have a problem on rotational kinematics. So we have a bowling ball that's thrown down an alley. Initially, it doesn't have any uh, rotation to it, but the coefficient of kinetic friction between the ball and the floor causes uh, uh, a torque, a net torque to be applied to the ball, which eventually causes it uh, to rotate. Eventually, it'll get to a point where uh, it'll be rotating, but it won't be slipping against the floor. And so, it is a rolling motion problem and we need to find the speed at which the bowling ball is traveling uh, given its initial speed. So for question one, this is a sort of visual representation of uh, what we're trying to find. We're trying to find uh, this height h and we know the radius of this loop and we also know the size of our cylinder. So we should notice, first of all, 
that initially the cylinder has no kinetic or rotational energy, just gravitational potential energy. And when going from position one to position two, so position one would be when we have yet to release the cylinder and position two is at the peak of the loop, um, the change in gravitational potential energy will uh, result in the cylinder having some kinetic and rotational energy due to conservation of energy. As I said earlier, uh, the phrase rolls without slipping just means that the velocity of the cylinder and its rotational velocity are coupled. And furthermore, to make it around the loop without losing contact, uh, what that means is essentially the weight of the cylinder or the gravitational force acting on it must be equal to the centripetal acceleration at the peak of the loop, uh, which means that there's no normal force acting on the cylinder, um, and that would be for uh, for finding essentially how much speed the cylinder needs to make it around. So we can express our conservation of energy mathematically uh, using this expression. Notice that uh, we have a delta H plus 2R because the, we need to take into account the location of the center of mass of the cylinder because it's not just a point particle. Uh, you'll see in our diagram that we drew earlier, uh, we need to account for uh, the radius of uh, the cylinder because the center mass is actually one radius obviously away from the track wherever it's touching. And so by conservation of energy this uh, change in height should result in an increase in kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. Um, to find I for a solid cylinder we can just refer to a table and we should see that I is equal to one half mr squared uh, where m is the mass and r is the radius of the cylinder. And so we should note that um, one half is the shape factor, which is denoted by c. Furthermore, we can find the centripetal force required to go around the loop um, using the fact uh, that the force would be equal to mv squared over uh, r minus r, where capital R is the radius of the loop and the lowercase r is, once again, the radius of the cylinder. That's because the loop that the cylinder travels in is not actually um, the loop dictated uh, by the track, but actually a slightly smaller loop that's dictated by its center of mass. Isolating for v squared, we find that v squared is equal to g times uh, capital R minus lowercase r. And for rolling motion, we know that the velocity and rotational velocity, uh, or angular velocity, I should say, are coupled by this equation, v is equal to omega r. So now we can begin solving. Uh, starting from our conservation of energy equation, we can immediately substitute uh, our expression for i in. Um, and then we can use the fact that r times omega is just v. Given, uh, given that we have a uh, rolling motion, there's no slippage between the track and the cylinder. And so when simplifying, we get uh, 3 over 4 mv squared on the right-hand side. But we have an expression for v squared given that um, the cylinder is able to make it around the loop without losing contact uh, with the track. So that becomes 3 over 4 mg times capital R minus R. And solving for delta H, we find in the end uh, that delta H is equal to 3 over 4 uh, capital R minus 11 over 4 lowercase r to find the total height uh, of the initial starting position. We simply need to add uh, 2 times the radius of the loop. And so we find our final expression for H is 11 over 4 times capital R minus lowercase r, which results in the answer 14.7 meters. And notice how uh, this answer doesn't depend on a lot of the information that was given in the question, such as the length of the cylinder or uh, how heavy it is. It really just depends on uh, its shape factor and it also depends uh, on the size of the loop and the radius of the cylinder. So moving on to question two, uh, also I should note for the last question, sorry, excuse me, 
Um, if we were dealing with a point particle that doesn't have any rolling motion uh, associated with it, doesn't have any rotational energy, uh, this final answer would be lower than 14.7 meters because the object is not losing energy to its rotation. So now moving on to question two, let's talk about the bowling ball. Uh, so we can say that the bowling ball is a solid sphere approximately, which means that our shape factor is 2 over 5. So uh, I would be equal to 2 over 5 mr squared. We know that the bowling ball has no initial spin, which means that omega at 0 is equal to 0. And we know that the torque is what increases the uh, angular velocity, and it's what decreases the uh, the velocity of the center of mass until we get to a point where v is equal to omega r, which means we have rolling uh, without slipping. So just to show this in a very simple drawing, uh, the force of kinetic friction, it creates a torque around the center of mass, uh, which is the center of the sphere. Uh, but this force also uh, causes a uh, an acceleration um, to the left, which causes the speed of the ball to decrease. So we can express this um, by looking at the net torque, which is equal to Fk uh, times r. And we know that this is equal to i times the angular acceleration. So given that we know the force of friction is just the weight times the coefficient of kinetic friction, we can, and we also know our value for a, we can substitute those in and we can solve for our angular acceleration. Then we can integrate this uh, to find uh, a time dependent expression for our angular velocity. And given that our initial angular velocity is zero, uh, we just see uh, this expression is alpha times t. Then we can look at the velocity uh, of the ball as a whole by doing uh, by looking at the net force acting on it, uh, which would just be equal to minus fk, and this is equal to uh, the mass times acceleration by Newton's second law. Once again, we know our expression for fk, so we can solve uh, for the acceleration of the ball, which is just equal to minus g mu k, and we note that it's negative. Uh, we'll say it's negative because the velocity is decreasing over time. And earlier we said alpha is positive because uh, omega is increasing over time. So uh, once again, we can integrate to find a time-dependent expression for the velocity. And we note that uh, we need to keep our v of zero term because there is an initial velocity um, that's given by the person who threw the ball. So now we should write v of t in terms of omega of t. And we want to do this because we want to get rid of the time dependence. So we can take our expression for omega t and isolate for t. And then we can substitute this into our equation for v. And we find that v is equal to minus 2 over 5 omega r plus uh, v of 0. But we note that because we want to find the point at which the ball is rolling without slipping, we should note uh, that we can use the condition v is equal to omega r and find that v is equal to minus 2 over 5 v plus v of 0. Isolating, uh, we should find that v is equal to 5 over 7 of the initial speed, uh, which is equal to 4.64 meters per second. And intuitively, this makes sense. Uh, obviously, we want a value that's lower than our initial speed. It wouldn't make sense for the ball to speed up. And yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, but before we end, I'd like to make some quick acknowledgments. I'd like to thank Professor Tywison and Professor Wilson for the course and tutorial content. I'd also like to thank my tutorial TA, uh, Colin Dale. Uh, as well, I'd like to thank him for providing uh, the solutions to uh, these tutorial questions. So uh, thank you so much and take care.